I cried all morning. No thanks. Oh, never mind. Recording and transcription. Awesome. Haha. -ha. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> uh, okay, today is Friday, February 23rd of 2024. Um, let's start with attendance. Re, I'll start with you. Re Varco, present. Matthew Rathbun, present. Sam Young, present. Mike. Sorry, a little slow today. Mike Warner, present. Denny Palacios, present. Alejandro Casillas, present. William Coates, present. Uh, uh, just for clarification. Oh, oh, sorry, who's in? Who's online? Nobody? OK, uh, for clarification, Sam Young is our new elections manager, uh, not a voting member, just here to keep us on track <laughs> um, and accountable. Uh, yeah, we meet quorum. Beautiful. Sweet. Let's do the uh, mission statement. Anybody would like to read the mission statement? I'll read it. Thanks, Matt. Uh, the mission statement is to support the evolving needs of MSU Denver students by advocating their best interests to enhance the university experience and opportunities. Thanks, Matt. Um, the approval of the agenda. Has everybody had a chance to look at the agenda? Sweet. Anybody needs any changes? Well, is it possible to well actually potentially extend some time for discussion when I give some say cab updates? Uh, or, I mean, is that part of like the new business or what, what are you talking about? No, like no. adding it. I mean, yeah, potentially. OK, if we, we, we get to the issues, we'll see what happens. OK, yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Yep. So then let's just leave it. Everybody OK with that? No more changes? Sweet. OK, uh, so I motion we approve this agenda. I second. Sweet. Everybody who agrees, say aye. Aye. Awesome. Let's start with the announcements. Mike, Board of Trustees. Um, next meeting is next month. If you have anything that you would like the uh, Board of Trustees to know from student governments, then send it my way and I will gladly present it at the Board of Trustees meeting. Awesome. Um, okay, well, they have go. Go up. Uh, There's a lot to cover. My end. Uh, yeah. Accountability committee. Three. I have no update this week. OK. Budget. I have no um, update either. Just a reminder that we're going to be having a presentation today. That works. Um, on the budget committee, I know I am not um, for conflict of interest. I cannot do any of the movement, but Model UN will be contacting you soon um, with a request. So if you could let us know how to do that. Thank you. Sweet. Uh, PR, Matt. Yeah, so we met this week in our next event. Um, we're going to do well, did we go with the sixth, correct? Um, so March 8th is National Women's Day, um, but because that's a Friday, we're going to do an event a couple of days prior celebrating National Women's Day, hand out elections materials, and just do it as like a pop-up tabling event in the turn hall and like the area next to the piano. OK, OK. Uh, can the women in the council just be involved in that? Yeah, just absolutely. Awesome. Just let me know so I can yeah, be there. Thank you. Uh, we will skip sustainability for now, but any open floor announcements? Mike. Um, in the coming weeks, um, just a few things on my dock at least. Um, Elections code that's being done with, and then um, secondly, we're going to have a, probably have a discussion about raising the pay in TSAC. Um, I don't think it sufficiently kind of covers um, what is really intended, especially after the years here. I think, especially from like this experience, it's going to be something I'm going to bring up sooner rather than later. So, especially for the new council going into next year, and it would start next year. So, just put that everyone's docket. So, okay, thanks, Mike. 
Uh, Kenny, can I have the thing pull up again, please? This was my fault. I completely skipped it. Uh, but if we could have just like three minutes to talk about this. Whenever it's up, the. It's coming up. Because I have to go to President's Cabinet next week on this. Uh, on what do we think the university needs to gain and rebuild, rebuild trust? So let's pick one of each. I'm going to give us like three. Yes, Michael. I feel like if we, if they are asking us this question, they need to admit what they need us like admit what caused them to lose trust. Because uh, did they we did know. we know? But like we're not going to give them like just a pass for it. It's not a pass. It's they're they're sending this to every single department. So can we need to try and just pick one of each so I can bring it to the president's cabinet and I will make sure to tell them that. For them to, I, I don't know how to make them aware of what the causes are. I, I have, I think we've tried that. Um, so in communication and connection, there is access to senior leaders, transparency and authenticity, and cultivate community. Does anybody have any particular feelings about any of these? Matt. Under the communication and connection and the transparency and authenticity, um, Transparency of what actual resources are on campus. Because um, I even just talked to Gray and the Dean of Students office, and hopefully they'll fix this piece. But we get free mental health services at the health center, yet I've only found that information on an auxiliary MSU Denver site, and it's paid through our student fees. Okay, so. But that's just one example of like transparency beyond resources. Okay. I'm going to have Will and then I'm going to have Mike. So something that was brought up at the student success launch along these lines was uh, the talks about uh, cultivating community, which is under, I believe, communication right. and connection. Right. Um, I think that'd be important to reestablish trust, right? The face to face talks and connections with each other. Yes. OK, or events. It's, does that go to like access to senior leaders? Mm, can you or, ask that? Mm. Is that because when you talk about like face to face contact, is that access to senior leadership? Um, yes, I, they, they very well, very well look like that too. Yes. Okay. Yes, Mike. Since we're on this topic, I think one thing that a lot of us and would like to see is honestly more diversity in senior mm -hmm. leadership. I think for a what they claim fifty three percent like diverse kind of school. There's a lot of white people in that senior leadership team, and all the deans are all white. And for this type of school, for who they're teaching, I think it's probably, I mean, it leaves out some perspective, in my opinion. Okay. Alejandro. Uh, for me, I would say transparency and authenticity. Um, I think it would be a little better if they provide a breakdown of like what it is exactly in the tuition um, what each fee can give each student and why they're charging it and stuff like that. More specifically also because AHEC has like a low fee, it's like $6.50, but it doesn't make sense as to why there's a parking fee for AHEC and then we still have to pay for parking. Then aside from that, like just the um, the fees such as the recreation fee, let students know like, oh, with this recreation fee, you have access to this, this and this. Yeah. Okay. Got it. That's a lot of PR for them to do. Awesome. Um, feeling valued. There is people feel seen, included, and respected. Invest in our people or create culture of recognition. The create culture of recognition, I think uh, Dr. Benitez came and talked about last week. So I think they are working on that. And I, I yeah, we know they're working on that and they listen to it. So does anybody have any thoughts on those three? Matt. Um, invest in like our students because um, again we've been facing this whole semester like with the student orgs not having a space to necessarily meet and I think it would be good for maybe them to create a space for stuff like that. Okay. 
Um, perfect. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah um, I would say I agree with that too. invest with our people. Um, you know, there I feel like a lot of the money that's used on this campus can be used on better resources instead of just having something displayed outside that isn't necessary to have, in my opinion, but yeah. And something that was brought up by faculty the other day was um, to uh, stop spending money in shiny things and spend it in students, whatever that means. Um, yeah, so I think this is this is a thought. I think in investing in our people is not only investing in students, but also giving our leadership and giving that they are mostly white, the resources to interact with students of color or like a different class uh, bracket. So, I I feel like there is a very much like sense of like paternalistic complex within leadership and like we know better than you do. Um, so I think like also investing in our students is also for them to invest themselves in some sort of some sort of like sensitivity training. I don't know how that would look like, but I don't know. How, what do you guys think? Yeah, OK, am I OK to go and say that to them? Cool. OK, um. Cool, last one. Consistent focus and alignment, prioritization, fix broken processes and systems, all working towards a strategic plan. Um, we said that we were working with them in the strategic plan. That is was in the SAB presentation that I gave. So that is like right off the bat. Uh, yeah. Uh, a goal for us to be completely involved and to make sure that students are included in the strategic plan, both of the university and campus development. So does anybody like to add to that? Because I know that's like a given for us, but any any thoughts on the other two? Um, on fixing broken processes and systems, I think one of the major ones is that workday fiasco because it slowed down campus across the board. OK, got it. I, I agree. And I think they have a meeting next Friday on that too. Yeah. Yeah, they do. OK, sweet. So I'm just going to compound everything we said today. And Dr. Simpins is coming later today. So if you guys have any thoughts specifically on this, please bring them up. Sweet. Any more uh, open, open announcements? Yes. I have one. I know someone from the student success launch meeting wants to meet with us. Um, give me, sorry, kind of all over the place today. Alyssa Marks, um, she's wanting to get some insight on the uh, experimental major map that the school is developing. Um, and I just let them know that uh, they can just come in one of these Fridays. So it's just a little heads up that they'll probably be showing up soon. And then also uh, the vet office is also doing like a resource uh, like uh, PowerPoint, you know, basically what the off, uh, office has to offer. Um, let's see real quick. Sorry. That is, I believe I'm going to put that for the agenda for next week. OK. Yep. Sounds good. Uh, anybody else? OK, move, move to me uh, and Nothing on faculty senate, uh, but council of chairs and directors is next week, as well as president's cabinet. So I will have a lot more to say next week. Uh, train. Can we, Kenny? Can, can we get rid of a transitional leaders committee out of the agenda, please? Thank you. It's okay. Advice or updates? Hi, Armando. Hello, <clears throat> um, the uh, constitutional changes to get them for you all to vote on. It's taking a little bit longer this week, kind of got thrown off with some things. So um, they should be ready by, I'll say, end of day Tuesday um, for you all to. We said we were going to put it in the chat for you all to vote per amendment, or would you like to run through it in the meeting? 
next Friday, I will not be here in the meeting. Um, I also, with one missing, you might not meet Quorum. I will be online because I have to bring that resolution. That is yes. Well. So I have I, you will you will direct the the meeting, but I, I'm gonna have to be online. Either way, I will pass on the presentation for you all to have where it'll have the original and the amendment, and then you all can choose to vote, discuss however you see fit. Um, so I will get that to you by early next week so you can edit it to the agenda for yourselves. Um, other than that, we've hired Sam, our new elections manager. So everyone, please play nice, be respectful, um, and yeah, allow him to do what he needs to do. Uh, the elections code, I just want to clarify, you all have received it, correct? I can get head nods. Yes. Yes. Okay. So you all have received it and you all you know, are allowed to make any recommendations for us to consider, um, but the elections code is being managed by myself, the advisors, um, Sam, and then we will, after it comes back from legal, making sure it's all in accordance with the university, we will pass it through another student just so there is some student voice um, and move forward from there. Any questions? Mike. Or, oh. oh, sorry, I didn't see you. No, you're good. Go ahead, Mike. Um, I know you sent it out. Do you mind kindly sending that out again? At least. Kindly. Sure. Thank you, Armando. Um, am I still in the impression that the elections code has to be passed into the Constitution? Say it one more time. I can't. Is it encoded? Yes, friend. Do, do we still have the codified elections code in the Constitution? Correct. Okay. So and basically everything will be codified next week, it looks like. Once you guys get the amendment proposals changed, you're voting on those next week, and then the elections code will be finalized and hand over for you to just approve the final document next week as well. Make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you, you're pondering. What are you pondering about? Because I have some. I made some suggestions into the current elections code at the moment. Um, have I. Huh? So have I? Yeah. So I've made a few uh, changes as well. Suggestions. Suggestions. You can't do change yet. Yeah, it's not changed yet, but suggestions. They're 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 marked up. You can see the edits there. But okay. Okay. That's Hi. all. Hi. Yeah, are you all? Are you yep, that's all. Hi, Sam. Hello. Thanks for having me, everybody. Um, got a couple quick updates. Um, we're pretty much done with the elections candidate packet. We're just waiting on some elections code stuff, and then we'll have that ready to distribute on March 11th. Um, I have the schedule ready uh, for the election season, and I've got Kenny pulling that up right now, so we'll have that with you in a second. Um, so as you can see on the schedule, March 27th is when we'll have our application packets due, um, and then first week of April, uh, we'll have orientation, first day of official campaigning, uh, and then first day of voting on April 8th. And we'll have a 10-day voting period, April 8th to April 19th. Um, and so that's our, our schedule. I'll send out any updates if anything changes, but as far as I'm aware, we should be sticking with this this year. Um, and then I have a couple events I'm starting to plan. Um, I want to do a, some sort of social event to advertise uh, TSAC for any potential new candidates. Um, we're going to be planning an info session, um, so I need candidates who won't be returning this year uh, to reach out to me or I'll re reach out to you as well, um, and we can plan that for new prospective candidates. Um, I definitely want to do a town hall, like very light, you know, debate, get to know uh, candidates kind of situation, and then a get out the vote for the first week of voting and potentially the second week of voting. Um, so I'd like to do those four events specifically, um, I'm open to any feedback or suggestions uh, since it is my first year here. So if there's anything you know that has worked, hasn't worked, please let me know. And I'm totally open to collaborating. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you, Sam. <clears throat> any questions for Sam? Cool. OK, there's five minutes into public comment. Um, Dr. Simpkins is here. Hi, Dr. Simpkins. You want me to go? Um, I mean, do you want to start now and then? I can pause whenever okay. needed. Um, Sweet. Yeah, we have let's, let's oh. have 
Let's have them go first. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Would you like an agenda, Dr. Sinkins? No, I'm good. Okay. Thank you, though. Yeah. Um, we do have public comment at one. Do you do you want to begin now? Do you want to? Basically, I am waiting. Do you for ready? You want to wait? We have communications and Chief of Staff Brown to okay. show up too as well. So y'all do what you need to do. I I got here just a little early. Okay. Okay. Well, go ahead. So, um, if someone does show up, I'll stop. Uh, so a few things. Uh, um, AHEC is opening Siggy's Hub up, and they're doing that grand opening, like the ceremonial event, on March thirteenth. Um, they have uh, asked that we have speakers for that from our student government of all student governments, but not just, uh, you know, the people on the say cab. Um, so I have someone in mind for one of the speeches for say cab. Um, I will talk to that person specifically later and see how they feel about being one of the speakers. But one of the things that they were asking is like, I brought up student engagement as one of the speeches. I don't know if there's anyone on this council who is passionate about, I mean, technically we all are, but like someone who'd be willing to be there that day and that time to talk about student engagement, give a little small speech or something. Um, and then they also asked if we could potentially have someone for the signing in process of that day, a student government rep. The what? The signing in process, like you just sit there and, you know, hey, sign in, you know, you don't want to do it? I mean, I'm I'm thinking of doing it, but I'm just offering it out there too. So okay. before I exactly oh, you need someone else to go with. Yes. Okay. If possible. Okay. I'm gonna have Matt talk and then I'm gonna have you talk. What date and time is it? It is March thirteenth. And from my knowledge, this might move around, but it's from three PM, three thirty ish to five thirty, but I put three to six PM, you know, just in case. Mm -hmm. Um Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Will. Um, yeah, and uh, let's see what time. It's almost time. And one last thing. Uh, they asked for board games, if we have any. I know we have some uh, outside stuff like cornhole or whatnot, but I don't know. Yeah. AHIC asked for things from us? I mean, <laughs> if, we, if we have board games, we can just put them there and then grab them when the event is over. It's not, I don't know. I'm not. I know. This, I'm, not, I'm not surprised with you. Yeah. I'm surprised that they're asking us yeah. to bring things when. Yeah. But they'll provide like everything else, the tables and the. No, I and, I understand. Yeah. So. Mike. I know CKEV has a um, very nice budget as well. Yeah. So just put that there. I know yeah. we. I know. If I didn't, want to buy us some board games. Well. I, just, I, don't, right. I know. I didn't use my budget. They can my borrow. Budget. Yeah. Care, so. Maybe that's something to look into for sure future. But uh, yeah, I uh, that's. That's my updates from last uh, today's SACAB meeting. Um, please let me know if you're interested and uh, thank you. Thank you. Dr. Benitez, would you like a microphone? Um, I was gonna, I know because, because we're here, I'm just gonna show some love and then I'm bouncing <laughs> and leave ya to uh, the biz. In case I missed open floor, I just wanted to quickly say, thank you, sir, um, that, I plan to meet with Alejandro um, about with the safety task force and what happens next. Thank you all for coming to the training today and um, we'll talk and then meet with Dean Tackett. Thank you, Uri. Awesome. Okay, it is one o'clock. It is time for public comment, but we do have some guests today. Um, so if our Someone, everybody shows up for public comment. We will have to stop business and then just let them speak, and then we'll resume our our business. So I'll I'll have you guys introduce yourselves. Sorry. Awesome. Hey, folks. I think I know most of you. I'm Will Simpkins, Vice President for Student Affairs. Hi. Happy to be here. I'm Andrea Smith, Associate Vice President for Strategic Communication. Good afternoon, Edward Brown, Chief of Staff in the Office of the President. And I'm Kelly Evans. I am the faculty fellow this year, and I work closely with Edward. Thank you so much for coming. It is very exciting when the leadership comes and yeah, talks to us. 
Thanks. Um, sweet, I'll give you the floor. Awesome. We're happy to be here. Uh, re not fancy. I'm having an apple and a Diet Coke for lunch. <laughs> do not be like Will. Uh, That's right. Don't do be not like be... us. Wow. There's Chipotle. I, I, I'm happy with my apple and Diet Coke. <laughs> Thank you. No. Um, I want to say, I want to start by uh, saying two things. One, how, um, and I don't want this to, to be patronizing, how proud we are of the work that TSAC has done this past year. You all, what I have witnessed really stepped up student government's game around resolutions and getting the word out there, your social media presence, the way that you represent the student voice, I think is, is truly exemplary. So that's number one. Number two, we, we specifically wanted to come today and talk about the resolution that Denny shared at the last president's cabinet meeting, calling on the president to make a statement on several humanitarian crises happening in the world. And we wanted to walk you through um, generally how the university responds to critical incidents that might impact our community, when and how we make statements, um, and, then, and have a dialogue with you. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit first about when issues happen in the world, sort of what do we do behind the scenes to make sure that we're supporting students. I'll then throw it over to my colleague Andrea to talk a little bit about um, the statement, the, the various ways that we communicate out of the university, including statements that the uh, president makes. And then I'll talk a little bit about what we're thinking about for the future. So just in the last couple of years, um, we have dealt with uh, the, uh, um, I don't know what we're calling it, October the 7th, um, when Hamas invaded Israel and the after effects. We've had the fires in Maui. Um, we continue to monitor the war in Ukraine. Those are just three flashpoints and a number of others. When, as soon as we find out that something's happening in the world, we immediately do two things. One, if it's an international uh, uh, incident, we work with our study abroad office to identify if we have any students currently in that area, in that region. So for the instance of um, both the Ukrainian invasion and then the invasion of Israel, we did not have any students in that, uh, that area. Then we look at the student records to determine if we have any students who are from that region who are studying at MSU Denver, who are physically here or online. Um, we had a couple of students from the broader Middle Eastern region, but not from the specific Israel, Palestine. I think we had a student from Lebanon. Um, in the case of Hawaii, we actually identified, I think about 40 students who had zip codes from uh, the state of Hawaii. Once we identify students, we immediately reach out to them and say, we understand this is happening. We think you may be impacted. We want you to know we're here for support. Here's the phone number you can call if you need access to, you know, in the case of Hawaii, um, money, uh, goods, items, services, let us know through the Student Care Center and the Dean of Students Office. So our first uh, uh, instinct in those cases is to wrap our arms around our students. Of course, when things happen domestically, we do um, the similar activities. We also include our faculty and staff in that work. Again, our primary goal is to support students. Now, in cases uh, that the sort of the next wave is, do we need to initiate some sort of dialogue, some sort of processing space um, to ensure that students who might be as, as part of an identity group or shared experience group feel supported? Um, a good instance would be when the mosque in New Zealand uh, was shot in 2019, I believe. Um, Cynthia was then the director of the Center for Multicultural Engagement and Inclusion, held a, um, sorry? I said I am. Sorry. And is now, uh, <laughs> held a, a space for students to come together and process the events and talk about what it means to them and how they feel. And I'd say we had probably 40 or 50 people mm -hmm. um, in the CMEA lounge for that. In the case of Israel and Gaza, um, this was really complicated. At that time, we did not have any recognized or even unofficial Jewish student groups 
or Muslim student groups. So now it's changed a little bit. We have a director of Jewish student life, Lauren Bain, who's funded by Hillel Colorado, who has started to pull together uh, the community. But at, at the time in October, there was really no mechanism for us to reach out specifically to a group of students to say, we know this is hurting. How can we um, support you? I'll talk a little bit after Andrea about how we're looking at the future, because I don't want to leave without you knowing some of the steps that we're going to take. Actually, it would probably make sense for me to just do that now. So um, two things happening. One, uh, we continue to meet with Lauren. Uh, Lauren arrived on the Auraria campus in December, I think early December, maybe. She's a part time employee paid for by Hillel of Colorado. Um, she's been holding weekly uh, sort of connection sessions. But until I met with her and then connected her with Cynthia and Taylor, she didn't she was not woven into the fabric of any of the institutions. Um, so we're getting her connected with SESA. We're going to help her get connected to the communications platforms with students so that students can find her uh, and build build community here on the Auraria campus. We are also committed to initiating the same process for our Muslim uh, identifying students. We've not started that yet because we're just putting the resources in place to do it. But similar to what we did four years ago when we created a, a part time position that explicitly served our native indigenous population, that that person worked to form NISA. And then we've seen the, the tremendous growth coming out of that student organization. So we're going to start those processes now to make sure that the Muslim community on campus feels supported. And we monitor very closely any protest activity, any speech activity that is going on on campus. So we're aware that SDS has been protesting basically like twice a week um, since beginning of October, late September. Um, we do typically have staff who attend the protest just to make sure if we need any de-escalation, uh, if the police department needs any support from us that we're there. Of course, any, if any violations happen, either somebody's um, uh, going into an academic building, which is against the AHIC policy, posting something that is against in a place that's against the policy, or if we witness language or confrontations that could be perceived as violating our student code of conduct, we will intervene. So far, luckily, there have only been a couple of instances um, where uh, the police department, in fact, has had to intervene. Uh, the protest attempted to go into a classroom building, which violates our policy. And in a couple of instances, external actors to the campus uh, came into the protest and attempted to um, rile it up. Um, but luckily, it did not turn into uh, worse. I know that tensions are running extremely high right now. And so what I want you to know is we appreciate when you let us know something's going on. Thank you, Denny, for your email earlier this week. Um, we often uh, work behind the scenes to both make sure that any students who are impacted are supported, to investigate if any anything has run amok of our policies. Um, and if they do, we then take action. We're about to pull in uh, a few student organizations to have a conversation, just to remind folks of the responsibilities of our free expression policy on the Auraria campus. And uh, we'll be sending a note out to all student organizations in the coming weeks, just reminding everybody again, what our chalking policies are, our protest policies, our posting policies, AHEC and MSU Denver, just as a sort of refresher course on what it means to be an active student organization um, on campus. So let me throw it over to Andrea to talk about the statements and the comms from the university. Thank you, Will. Um, I just want to start off by recognizing these are difficult decisions. These are difficult situations um, that we seem to be facing more and more all too often, nonetheless. I mean, you, I can think of probably a dozen more, um, you know, tragedies really that have happened in my two years with the university. Um, so 
as we as we face these situations more and more, we continue to refine and, and iterate our processes for evaluating them. And I think Will and the Dean of Students um, office processes around really how are we identifying who is impacted and reaching out to them directly and getting them resources is the most important part of that equation. Um, and so thank you for your leadership on that and really working to integrate those with our processes as well. I think um, we continue to refine uh, the focus of our official statements, and we are really to working to um, centralize those around matters of direct impact to the campus community and for the university fulfill its mission, right? Is it impacting our daily operations? So that's the number one thing we're looking at as we're, as we're deciding, hey, are we you know, are we going to push something out and make a statement? It's most important for us to provide actionable information and resources to folks, um, both students, faculty, and staff, right? So, so that's also what we're looking at. Hey, do we have resources we can provide here that are relevant in this context um, to the vast majority of our campus, right? So that's important um, anytime you're putting out uh, mass communication that it's relevant to the majority of the folks receiving that. I think it's it's important to understand our role as a university is to foster fact-based dialogue, right? Um, it's to support uh, the discovery, improvement, and dissemination of knowledge, as I've heard it termed. Um, if any of you are familiar with the University of Chicago, their Calvin Commission, way back in the 60s, did an entire review of this and put out a report so Google it. Um, but one of the, the way they couched it essentially is the university is the home and sponsor of critics. It is not the critic itself. Right. So it, we really want to be mindful of equipping and empowering others to speak out on issues that are important to them. But we don't want to have a chilling effect by putting out a university statement on one side or the other of something that can. Um, dissuade maybe students or faculty from coming out with opinions of their own that may be against the university stance, right? So that's another factor in when we're evaluating these things. We don't want to have that chilling effect. Um, you know, we have a variety of campus community members, as you all well know. So last semester, in this specific instance, when we were looking at, wow, how do we get a message out to share those resources and that information to support people across campus, we look to focus on kindness. And we did send out a, a message on November 4th. Hopefully you all received that of last year. Um, and also encouraging respectful, respectful dialogue along with some of those resources, right? Um, we want to do that rather than taking sides um, for the reasons of supporting our full campus community and also not having a chilling effect on that dialogue. Right. So it's really important to understand our role in these instances and the role of university statements. Um, we do encourage encourage responsible advocacy. Right. We want um, folks to um, get out there to educate themselves, to do outreach and advocate in responsible ways. And that is within the purview, particularly of this group to speak on behalf of the student body and, and to do those outreach and advocacy efforts. And we wanna make sure folks are supported and well positioned to do that. Um, we encourage uh, folks to consider what their framework is. What do you speak out on? How does that work? You know, How do you make those decisions? What are your goals when you do that, right? What value are you adding to that conversation? Are you doing it in a responsible way? So that's something to consider. And we also like to hear those stories in university communications to be self-serving. We want you to reach out to us if you're doing something that is unique um, and um, interesting and noteworthy so that we can help share the story of how you are advocating responsibly on behalf of your constituent group. So that's just a little bit um, of information there about kind of how we approach these decisions in university statements. Again, we have had dialogue with the board um, within the last few months. We've had dialogue with a number of different groups, and we continue to evaluate these situations and iterate our processes on um, just this past weekend, the UCCS tragedy. 
um, you know, yet another instance um, of a shooting in our state, right? How do we approach that? How do we, you know, provide the resources and support? You know, do we do this in mass? How often? On which incident? So we continue to have those conversations and we welcome any input or questions you all may have. And the question I, I definitely want um, feedback and want to throw another question on the table. As we particularly think about the crises that are facing our world right now, how could we, given the current context on campus, best facilitate a critical, respectful dialogue? And I'd love your, your opinions, your ideas, your thoughts, your suggestions. Re. Mm -hmm. I um, came back to school in response to the COVID call. I'm studying to be a mental health counselor, getting my master's. My sons are undergraduate students. The eldest started in 2019. You wouldn't know that they are New Zealand citizens and grew up in New Zealand. You wouldn't know that. You wouldn't have reached out to them. You wouldn't know that my father's side of the family is Lebanese. and you know, so these things, of course, all, you know, affect my family in many different ways. Um, and I feel like, and I think I added to this resolution when we first talked about it last fall with Naomi, that in my opinion, especially having, I, when I was in New Zealand, I'm a technical writer right now for to pay the bills, but I um, was the communication and marketing executive for a city, for a city council. And um, I believe that having a neutral, like many universities have done, a more neutral stance, but a statement against violence and not just specifics. I, I admire that you've approached those you know that have been directly affected, but I think it's better um, for the university in a public perspective and for all students because of range of students that we have here, the families that they're from, the people that they might be living with or, you know, as migrants and other situations. For big things like this conflict, you know, to make a statement, I didn't see that. I, I guess it didn't come through to me in November. But many universities, even though they might be changing their message, are making general statements of concern and care not to pick a side, you know, because I agree that's fraught, but just to show that and to generally point to some things, acknowledging that this affects all of us and specifically, you know, those who family or friends or, or relatives, you know, might be affected. So I would be of the mind that Yes, you'd have to definitely plan what you respond to and what you don't and how you do. But I would be um, for in the in the camp that says a general statement that doesn't pick sides but shows care and concern is important because you wouldn't have reached out to me. So, so I'm curious because I I saw Matthew and Reed both say that they didn't receive that November email. Did did you all see that note from the president in November? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it we'll went to forward. all students, faculty, and staff, and it is on the president's website as Great. well. Which which did exactly what I think you just described. It was yeah. a I think you, it was a call to kindness, mm -hmm. which is antithetical to violence. Mm -hmm. um, but read it and give us feedback on mm -hmm. on did it address your your concerns. Yeah. I, hi, Denny Palacios. Um, just a couple of things. Um, regarding the question of how we can create a critical environment to, to think about things. Uh, you, you're right. We, at the moment that you, the invasion in Ukraine happened, we did not have any students in Ukraine uh, identified. But yet the president gave a panel and she directed that conversation. Um, again, nobody in the statement that I made at President's cabinet at any point, it was done that we wanted you to take a site. It, again, it was that just 
uh, a kindness statement, but if it has been done and we missed it, completely on us uh, on that on that end. Um, if we're looking for serious suggestions, there have been instances across the nation where a Muslim student and a Jewish uh, person get together and they give the panels um, to so so we can get into a critical discussion of what the history of the land is. Um, other than that, um, advocating respons that responsibly, that looks very different for us who are of, you know, like different status. Um, yeah, I think I think that's a bigger conversation that we should have about what like responsibly and professionally looks like and how that can be approached with kindness to students of color and again of a different class bracket that perhaps don't act right. Um, I think that would be a, a good conversation. Um, if we could have that mediated, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I think we, we would have to think about that, but th those are my suggestions. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for being here. I really appreciate Very grateful that you guys are here. Anybody else? I found the email under kindness day, but I think it kind of buries the lead and maybe that was intended, you know, from what I just read, you want to, it's not showing strength, but don't pussyfoot around, I think. <laughs> Even though you're going to remain neutral, you know, acknowledge this pain and, and, and our need to support each other. And that, you know, Dr. Davidson and this, this administration, you know, is here for our students and our community, our family at MSU Denver. That it's important. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can, may I ask if... Um, are these conversations happening, these critical dialogues, are they happening in your classes? Are they happening in other venues that maybe we're not? No, at? no, this is this has been and that has been the I thank you for recognizing that we've stepped up our game because this has been students that come out to us. Like we have not looked out like students have had the courage to come out to the student government office and talk to us. Um and, and that I, I guess that's why I'm we're taking so much like thread on it because the student in the email that I sent you all last week, he went out of his way to make an appointment with me and then to write that write in statement and to make sure that we are clear on what free speech looks like mm -hmm. as long as we're being safe with each other. That That's, I mean, at the very fundamentals of it, right? Safety. But in terms of like the rest of the classes that you all are in, are your faculty engaging you in these conversations about world events to process and make sense of, or the vet lounge and other places? So in my experience, yes, the vet lounge definitely talks about conflicts. It's a pretty natural topic actually for veterans to talk about. Um, and of course there's a uh, varying opinions you know, both sides. So I totally understand the new, uh, trying to be neutral and whatnot, um, as well as certain classes that have to deal with uh, international relationships and relations, excuse me. Um, uh, professors will kind of bring it up, but, you know, I think to some degree, you know, they're also being careful on how they talk about these Ongoing, ongoing current events, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, there's definitely a lot of talk out there. I've had students as well come up to me and like state that they don't completely feel supported by the school. Um, so, yeah, that's that's my um, perspective mm -hmm. on that and my experience with this whole situation. Yeah, John. I, I defer to Danny. <laughs> John, go ahead. Well, first thank of all, thank you for allowing me to be on this. So what I got to say today, this, this Monday was the day that I buried my mother, Doris Jean Dandridge. And in honor of Black History Month, I want to say thank you because I have been homeless Dr. Benjamin Cooper helped me, Sonia Falcon, 
There was a lot of things going on. And it is very important. It's better to be happy than to be right. I, I was crying. Armando grabbed me. Cynthia took me to the back. I was experiencing some emotions. It was a combination of happy and sad simultaneously. And I want to say that MSU for me is the collective efforts of everybody on this campus. Each of you has been beneficial in some type of way to help bring us into what I consider joyful expansion. In closing, MSU isn't just Metropolitan State University. It is manifested sophisticated unity, which shows up as a student government. Thank you. And anybody else on that, Matt? Yeah, I was just looking at that email. Um, and honestly, it seems like it gives a lot of very generic supports, because um, I didn't see either of the programs you referenced, Dr. Simpkins, in this email with the Jewish life person they or didn't exist then. Yeah. They, okay. They're that new. They came, up, okay. they came in this semester. So that makes more sense then. I just wanted to bring that up because I didn't see any like pointing to where they can find their community on campus. It was more generic like the counseling center and the care center. Yeah. And if I can, um, you know, in cases where we don't have a, an organized structured mm -hmm. resource, where, where I can go and say um, to, to NISA and say, we want your, your help in responding to this critical incident that's happening in the community. Um, the repatriation of ancestral remains is a great example where, where we wanted you know, the community mm -hmm. to take the lead. In, in this instance and in the New Zealand shooting instance, we did not have any structured mm -hmm. student organization or academic department even mm -hmm. that we could lean on. And so in the New Zealand, and I'm, I'm going to ask a question and make it an admission here in a second. In the New Zealand case, we felt pretty comfortable sending out some pretty broad messages out into the community. Here's a space. If you need to process, come here on this day and this time, and we will be here for you. And we had counselors and folks ready to do that. Here's the admission. I have been wary since October of sending out a broad message like that because I have been concerned that it could unnecessarily um, do harm to our community by creating an unhealthy and unhelpful dialogue space or open up a, a protest space. And I, I think that may have been the wrong decision. And I'd love for you all to say yes or no, or, or even say, you know, maybe then, it was hot, but now it's time. It's gone on so long that it, that it's time. I can I can I just to go a response. I think now that you bring Nisa on, I think uh, some sort of event with Nisa and then our indigenous, I mean, your indigenous students and our Muslim students and our Jewish students mm -hmm. would be a great idea, um, so that we can. We don't have to talk about, you know, sides, but as long as we can recognize that there's grief going on within the community, mm -hmm. that would be great. Um, yeah, I think that that was that was all I had to say. Oh no, just just one more thing. I I I want you all to know that I I do firmly believe that you guys have the best intentions for the university. I at and in any second I doubt that. Um, so every time you guys show up. It's just it. We're very grateful for that. Yeah. I, I want you to know that. We appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that, you guys. I really appreciate the feedback. I think saying cut to the chase. Really appreciate that. I we want to. What is helpful for you as a part of these? You know, what types of information or resources would you want to see? You know, differently in addition to always um, welcome to that. Also know sometimes what, even when we do have relevant groups on campus that may be um, affiliated with a particular issue, they're not in a space that they may be ready um, to engage on a broader level. We have at times reached out to some of those groups and said, can you get back to us within 24 hours? 
And they actually got really upset with that, that we were kind of at, because we wanted to get the resources and information out to you all. But um, it, it, it really was a difficult thing for them to process in our timeline, right? Which I've, I've tried to learn from some of those issues and situations. So just know that sometimes um, we're, we're, we're working every angle. We're trying to put together every resource um, and, and it's a real challenge. And we also want to be respectful and balanced in that as well. Yeah, well, um, some possible suggestions, you know, um, just the denouncing of uh, conflict of war, especially um, with uh, my within my community. We understand that war is a very nasty thing, right? It, um, it's horrible. And I think most of us can agree on that and some kind of, I think just, uh, it's kind of hard to balance it all and be neutral about it, but definitely just, I think everyone on both sides or most people, right, can, can agree that just war is uh, not a good thing. Um, but um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's all. Um, I had for that. Thank you, Will. I agree. I just wanted to suggest that even though we have this care center and we have a lot of people who are expert at leading discussions or, you know, helping individuals with trauma or issues, you know, and trying to help them, maybe it's finding an expert who is able to, you know, we have to pay them to come and lead almost like a, a peaceful discussion and they do it a certain way and they know about de-escalation when it comes to international matters, war, things like that. I mean, it's very specific, but maybe someone exists like that. I'm happy to start hunting around and seeing, but that could be, and that Someone who's really expert at leading discussions or facilitating that type of discussion would be great at having, you know, making sure we there are calmer conversations that it's set up for success instead of failure yeah. and violence. I think that that would be really cool. Um, but if, if at any point we can offer a space for students to grieve, we will. I I think I'll everybody in this council would like to partake in that and like help you organize that because sometimes people just need to grieve yep. safely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, this is super helpful. Uh, please continue comments, suggestions, send them to any of us. We'd be happy um, to receive them. Um, we'll keep you posted. Uh, a meeting on, if you don't know this yet, I'm meeting on Monday morning with Cynthia and Taylor just to process through a couple of opportunities coming in the near term. Um, but we'll keep you posted on on how we move forward. And I'd love to have you as a partner. We we still have a committee that we need to talk about. Oh, OK, yeah. Do you want me to right. stay? No, no, oh, we after. have we have a student, but I will oh, email okay. you this week. OK, yeah, sounds good. Thank you so much for coming in, Thank guys. You. We appreciate you. I will see you in President's cabinet. Some of you next week. So. Before you all walk out the door, let's as a human collective give each other a hand. Just period. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a good weekend. Okay. Nice job, everyone. Thank you. Um, Okay, so we're gonna go to the funding presentation because our students are here and we're just gonna. Um, hi, Selma, and is that Haley? Yeah, it is. Hi. Um, I'm gonna oh, um, I'm have have we can't hear you guys, but I will let, I think Selma is ready. Just give me a thumbs up. I can see you in the camera, Selma. Are you, are you good to go? Awesome, perfect. So they're going on a Guatemala service and leadership international experience. Uh, the floor is yours. Hi, thank you guys so much for having us today. Um, I will be doing most of the talking. Haley is at a, the human, um, sorry, 
Habitat for Humanity. Habitat. Uh, they're doing a service uh, trip over there right now for the ELP program. So let's get started. Um, my name is Sama Lawson again. I am in the ULP program. Um, we are going to go on the Guatemala Service and Leadership International Experience. Um, this experience has been going on a few for a few years with um, Tony. Um, she's going to be the advisor for the trip. So yeah, we could go to the next slide. So um, we actually had a meeting with um, one of the people who run AMA and they had told me how to pronounce it. And I, I forgot how to pronounce it, so I don't want to butcher it, um, but they said that the short term was um, Shayla with an X, um, X-E-L-A, uh, Guatemala. So during this trip, we are going to be working with the Highland Mission Group. Um, that is the local indigenous group, um, also AMA. Um, this will be to support and explore the community of Guatemala. Some of the things that we are going to be doing is working with the local families to build smokeless stoves. Um, a lot of the time they were talking about how some of the women and the families, they have so much smoke inside of the house that it actually causes some um, health um, problems with a lot of the respiratories. So building the smokeless stoves would help alleviate that problem. Um, we are going to participate in some of the Mayan um, ceremonies that are led by Mayan priests to experience their spirituality. Um, we're going to be harvesting corn. We will also receive lectures on the Mayan culture and philosophy. Um, we're going to take some of the cookery classes just to learn about some of, I feel like most of their food is going to be healthy, more healthy than what we have now because it's not as processed. Um, and then learn about the ancient backstrap weaving and the textile trade. I can go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so yeah, like I said, building the smokeless stoves. Um, that is going to be going on for two days. It'll be the first two days that we get there. Um, so, and also the communication um, between the members of AMA and all the d indigenous women. Um, we will, uh, I have tried to learn a little bit of their, the Spanish. There is a little bit of a um, pronunciation, um, of course, with different um, dialects of Spanish but um, just being able to communicate with them also just it's not always in English. Um, creating uh, the tangible differences in their nutrition. Everywhere there is different like nutrition, health, like norms, I would say. And theirs is very different from ours. So I'm very excited to learn about how theirs is. And hopefully I could adopt those techniques. Um, and then resource management. Um, understanding the Mayan culture. Um, we did learn about the Mayan culture. I, I did in um, middle school, but they don't go too far into depth about it. So I'm glad I get primary, primary sources of learning about their culture, food, um, what they do on a day-to-day -day basis, um, how their quality of life is determined. Um, and then, yeah, just seeing their diverse leadership. Again, this is a woman organized organization. So it's gonna be very different from um, what we're used to here in the U.S. Um, and yeah, if you go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So yeah, so for my personal goals, um, again, learning how to cook the healthy foods, um, learning about the different culture that will help my knowledge going into the health field. My, ma my major is healthcare professional services. So I'm hoping to bring that into a um, health admin position role, um, maybe bring some of their techniques back, see if it, how it, um, translates to what we do here and then learning the braiding styles i do do a lot of braids as you can see um i almost have my hair in braids all, all the time so i'd love to see how they um incorporate that with their culture to the next slide please thank you um so yes uh, learning to communicate effectively through interpersonal conflicts um, with our student group and then their Mayan people, just learning the cross-cultural differences in communication, um, building cohesion between the groups when it comes to their way of life and how they think about things on a day-to-day -day basis, and then us as well. Um, and then just the, the culture shock, there will probably be a culture shock because they are very different from us. Um, they, I'm very excited to learn just about their I, thoughts kind of on people in America and maybe if 
us coming in, if we could challenge those thoughts and maybe have them think a different way about some of the things that we do here um, compared to what they do. Go to the next slide. So um, as far as sharing knowledge and experience, food is a very common relator of different communities. Um, so definitely sharing about what food means to them and then what it means to us. Um, that's going to be very different and I'm really going to enjoy that. Um, and then being respectful of their culture and the way that they celebrate things. They, you know, everyone celebrates things differently. So just learning how they celebrate it, maybe we could adopt some of that. Um, and then also about the health, what it means to be healthy, physically, mentally, everything. Um, Cause you know, it's, it's gonna be something we're gonna have to adjust to. We're gonna be there for a week. So it's gonna be something that we're gonna be involved in for at least a week. Um, and yeah, and then sharing art, I do love art. So through textiles um, and just everything that they do over there. And maybe I could take some of that also and um, apply it to maybe some gifts that I could give to um, family members or friends. Go to the next slide, please. So we are requesting a um, thousand. So that would cover, so with AMA, it's a inclusive experience. So the money would go to, it, so it'll all be together. So it'll go to food, lodging, activities, and transportation. So the transportation would be from the airport to the events that we're going to, to the cooking with stoves, the families, um, all of that. So that's what the ex inclusive experience was there for. Go to the next slide, please. Um, so the mission statement, um, Metro's mission statement basically was just enhancing our knowledge and bringing something we learned back to our community. So that's what we would be doing. I had said that multiple um, references to that um, and applying it to our future careers. I'm going into the health field. I know Haley um, wants, I think she's pre, pre-law. Yeah, I'm pre-law, studying political science, right? so definitely the cultural exchange, learning about different cultures, yes. political structures is helpful to bring back. Definitely. Yeah, so definitely applying that, it'll be perfect for both of our careers and everyone else in the group as well. Um, and then learning to communicate with the ones who don't speak English. I had, when we were talking to one of the leaders, her name was Lupe, she had said that English is their first language and Spanish is their second. Um, so, you know, it, we're kind of similar to us. Um, so I'm really gonna be excited to learn how they say certain Spanish words compared to like, let's say Spain Spanish. Um, and of course, a new perspective on the mile world, um, their spirituality, their religion, um, their social norms, how they, um, interact with the elders and the children, how it, everything works. Um, and then just valuing education outside of the Western global world. It's very different from, we're kind of sheltered in, so it's gonna be very different to experience um, what their education is gonna be like compared to what ours is like um, pre-K to uh, college. To the next slide. Uh, yes, for just the backstart weaving, I had mentioned this, um, the textile we're going to have, uh, I think we're doing this for a few hours on the third day. So just learning about that. And then of course, learning about their culture from a primary source who had lived through that experience. And I think the next one's the last slide. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, thank you guys for having me and Haley. I appreciate um, you guys listening out to us and um, Hopefully you guys enjoyed our presentation. Hi, thank you so much. Um, I do have a question. Where uh, where are the $1,000 going to go exactly? Do you guys do you guys have an idea? Oh. Yes, so um, okay. the $1,000. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. OK, um, yeah, so with the total. OK, so what I had taught when I was told is that for the transportation, food, um, and the activities, it's initially 1700 but um, we were told that we could only have, a, it was about a thousand. So we were just requesting that to at least get our foot in the door. We are almost at our mark. So this would help tremendously just getting 
to that specific um, number that we need. Um, did I answer okay. your question? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, you're good. Mike, I think Michael has a question for you. Uh, no question, just a general statement on how, like, <clears throat> how this went through the budget committee. Um, the budget committee allows three different types of students to request funding. Student orgs will receive, or um, they can receive up to $1,500. Groups, so like an individual, like a pairing, can receive up to $1,000, and then an individual student can receive up to $500. Yeah. Um, this Guatemala trip is not a, uh, a student org, so the budget committee confirmed that this would be the best uh, path forward was to uh, go with the uh, two kind of group option. That's where we get to the thousand dollar mark. Okay, thank you. I, and the only the other question that I have is, um, how would the how would the rest of the university benefit from this trip? Like, what are you guys bringing back to the university from this trip? Yeah. So um, I think me and Tony were talking about this more. Tony's the advisor for the trip. Um, like an informational meeting, setting up something in the Tivoli area, um, maybe the turn hall, um, just like a, hey, we're back. Here's what we learned. Here is some things maybe we could do workshops. ULP is part of the CME, CMEI program, so it's all kind of together. So maybe something with the CMEI urban leadership program of developing an event where people could come ask questions about what we learn and then maybe they can join the ULP program and learn the leadership skills that we've been learning um, for the past year and um, bring that back into a career or something that they want to do in the future. Just having that experience and like being in the culture of Guatemala, um, I feel like it would be very helpful to learn just how to be grounded and the students of Metro can learn from that if they've never experienced something like that about going outside of the U.S. and learning about different cultures from the primary source. Okay, that answers my question. Thank you. Anybody else has any yeah. questions? No, anybody would like to make a motion to vote? Perfect, we're, you go on. I motion that we vote on funding the, this group. Okay, I second. Everybody who agree, say aye. 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 Okay, any objections? Any abstentions? Sweet, you guys got your funding. Yeah. Thank we, you guys uh, so much. Yeah, Alejandro will get, Alejandro's our budget chair. I think you've been communicating with him. He will get back to you with uh, a letter and he will do that the same to CMEI and our advisor uh, with your award money. Good job. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Good luck. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for us out. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a good weekend. You too. Thank you. Um, we have a letter to Abel from Gabe. Are you in charge of that? Okay. Uh, next business is going to be the letter to Abel from our area faculty and staff. And who Will is going to, yeah, take the floor, Will. Oh, yours. The floor is yours. Oh. Okay, uh, Kenny, I think I sent that to you. Mm -hmm. Are you able to pull that up somehow? Oh, perfect. Okay. So while Kenny's pulling that up, here's some context, right? Uh, I will be speaking on uh, behalf of Gabriel. I have talked to him about this, so. He basically wanted this message to be read out to you guys before I read this letter. Um, he stated that he recently met with representatives from MSU Denver and CU Denver's faculty and staff senates. There he found out that many of them have received minimal information regarding the master plan that AHEC is currently creating. The master plan committee from AHEC and the Sasaki group in charge of development have not met with the staff and faculty senates regarding the master plan, which is inequitable since faculty and staff should be representative. Additionally, students have mostly been reached out through open houses the committee held, but did not advertise well. SACAB has met with the group twice and has voiced, and we have voiced our concerns about the plan as well. This letter is calling for a delay in the vote that happens in April to adopt the plan in hopes of allowing more collaboration to happen. 
There is still discussing about when the vote should be pushed to. However, the primary aspect is to delay it at least until the next ABOD meeting. So this letter that uh, Kenny pulled up, right? That's basically just a statement uh, drafted uh, by, uh, you know, CU Denver for the most part. But they reached out to us asking if we could present it to the council and see uh, we could approve of it and, you know, get our logo and, you know, our signatures to, to um, make a more uh, sh- uh, solidified, strong uh, statement to um, AHEC, right, in regards to this uh, a master plan where we have had little to no uh, collaboration or in, uh, input, um, as Gabriel stated earlier. So now that uh, it's up, I'm going to read it. Let's see. Let's dear Miss Walker and the Aurora Board of Directors, as representatives of faculty, staff, and students who work and learn on the Aurora campus, we write to you today to respectfully request that the April 3rd, 2024 vote by the Aurora Board of Directors on the Aurora Campus Master Plan be postponed for a later date. We are very interested in the plan and hope to partner with ABOT to help shape the future of our campus. To date, communications about the plan have been sparse. Detailed information has been difficult for us to obtain and the shared governance infrastructure necessary to ensure community participation and feedback in support of a project of this scale and scope has yet to be established. For these reasons, we feel strongly that the Aurora community requires more time to discuss the plan with AHEC and ABOD and with other campus stakeholders before the vote is taken. Given the breadth and depth of outstanding community questions and concerns, as well as the potentially transformative impact of the master plan on students, employees, and community members. We hope that delaying the vote provides adequate time for the following. <clears throat> community, uh, excuse me, community discussion, questions, and feedback. The development of, development of a robust shared governance systems for master plan management that incorporates students, staff, and faculty reps from all three institutions, as well as other community stakeholders, and enhance transparency around the master plan, including relevant legal and financial agreements and documentation. The final master plan document upon which ABOD planned to vote in April and any alternative plan slash visions for the campus previously developed by Sasaki and AHEC during the master plan process and discussed by ABOD. Thank you for your consideration, support for shared governance, and your attention to the needs of the Aurora campus community. Sincerely, and that's where we will discuss, you know, uh, the letter um, and hopefully vote on, you know, putting our mark on this letter, showing that we are in, uh, agreeance with the other SGAs on campus in regards to how um, AHEC has handled this whole master plan situation. I have a question for you. <laughs> yeah, can, is, are you good? Can we start a discussion? Yeah? Uh, yeah. Of okay. Could we get this to the Board of Trustees in your comment to like tell them like, hey, our student population is concerned of this. Can you, can you all say something? Is, is that a thing? Yeah, whatever you guys like me to present, as long as it's like not outrageous, I will gladly present well, at Board of Trustees. Well, the bar is low, my friend. I know, I know. The bar is low. Um, right, Dr. Barone. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to let Ree and then go ahead, Ree. I received this from Gabe, too. Um, thank you for reading that well. Mm-hmm. My concern is you know we listened to the chief of police talk today about see you know university of denver having their own button so they are very insular in the way they operate here yes, they are. well they don't play nice with everybody and this is my opinion of course but i think that maybe this was something that it, we don't know msu denver this was a good question for you know 
is this a pay to play kind of thing where MSU Denver is contributing to this expansion with AHEC and see Denver is not university of Denver's university of Colorado, Denver is what I mean to say, excuse me. Um, you see Denver is not contributing. And so why should they have a voice? That's what I'm thinking. We need to know those things before we stick our logo on it. I think, um, because they might have a reason for not having asked for input. We've earned the input, possibly. Yeah. Um, do you have an answer to that? Because I have an answer to that. Oh, no, I agree. But we do have the say on the C2 Hope floor on the, on the ball. The, we do have a say because of the ball, the ballpark lot in front of the Tivoli. I remember how they came and talked to us about the C2 Hub, just like that one floor was to be for MSU. So we, we do have some stakes, perhaps not as many stakes as like the private developers, but we do have some. Do you mean CU Denver? MSU. No, I know we do. Okay. But I'm saying Them. because CU Denver is the one saying we're not being talked to. And I maybe see. there's a reason. So that's why I think we should ask before hey, we put our logo on this and say, you're right. They should talk to you too. You know, we need to know that extenuating circumstances. Um, I do agree that AHEC does a really crappy job with communicating with students. Um, I do. I was chair of AHEC for a whole year. The person who was in charge of putting together this master plan was a student, and it, there was a SACAB rep from CU Denver, and it was Trevor Walker. He was the one, he went to these meetings, and they really drafted up the master plan. I don't know if CU Denver told you that. Um, and then he kind of just dipped that year, and I had to take his place on that position. Um, I would, I do agree with this. I mean, I have an issue with signing this, but I do want, I would mind, like, who is, is it Sean who brought this up or who, who who's originally brought this up? So Mitchell, uh, I don't have specifics, but I believe it's Mitchell who brought this to us and uh, us. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't mind Mitchell coming and talking to us. If, if you never wants us to pass something, I would rather them be, be here as well to speak on it as well, because this is a great letter, but also like, they aren't mm -hmm. as forthcoming with us as they could be, for sure. Because I know when I got needed them to get stuff like this done, it didn't happen. They didn't support it. So, yeah, I think I think we do need more time. I do think we need more time with them. And given the stakes that we do have in this project, I think we would be more than welcome to give a statement for ourselves, but I think CU needs to come and talk to us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, so I, I think. A, do, do you want a table? I see. I see. What do you think? I oh. want. I want a little more inside from other members as well. Maybe if you have any. I will add, if you do have a statement, if SACAP has something or has like a statement, did this go through SACAP? SACAP say yes to this already? The what? Sorry. Did SACAP say yes to this? Did like, y'all vote, vote on it? it? Yeah. Um, I don't think we did officially, no. Okay. Yeah. Well, if they did, let me know. I and mean, if they do in the future, let me know. Give me any, like, you can send me a copy of this letter. Mm -hmm. I will craft it in my own way and I'll present it to the board in mm -hmm. March. As well. Okay. Yeah. Um, I move we table this. It is maybe I'm not allowed. Do to you want to get with me? Sorry, Bree. Do you want to get with me after this meeting, Mike? Then. Okay. I know after this meeting, but eventually, yeah, we can schedule a time and talk about this for sure. Okay. I'm right back. Okay. I second what we said. Oh, about motioning to table it. Yeah. Next week. You want a week? To figure this with CU, is that okay? You want to? Yeah, I'd give it a week or two. Let's do two, or do you want you? How many weeks do you want? It's up to you. Up to two. Two? Okay, let's bring it back in two weeks. Sounds good. Uh, okay, then there's been a motion uh, on the floor for the letter to Avod to be moved uh, to be brought up again in two weeks. I know the motion hasn't. I just wanted that specific one. Just can you second that? Your second. Yeah. I second. Thank you. Okay. Everybody who agrees, say aye. 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 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? I abstain. Thanks, Will. Any objections? Oh my gosh, I forgot that Sweet, it passes. We'll we'll come back to it in two weeks. Let us know what you need, though. Who do you? So who do we need to talk to? Like, just let us know who do we need to when whenever this week. Is. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh my god, that's not funny. Um, okay, sweet. Anybody else has anything? I'm gonna start counting hippopotamuses. Armando. Just one last thing, if you could please just check the chat um, so I can finalize some language to get something scheduled. Thank you. Right now? Whenever you get a chance, doesn't have to be at the second. The, the... Okay, I motion we adjourn this meeting. I second that. Everybody, oh, that is true. We did, did not get a sustainability committee update. Do you do you have a uh, do you have an update for sustainability committee? Not yet, no. No. Okay. Wait. Uh, real quick, you did say last week you wanted it. Maybe I'm confusing you, but did you want to honor your mother? We have some time. Yeah. Well, I did. Okay, Kenny, go ahead and roll what you have. It's the video. Thank you. This is my mother, Doris. I'll be quiet. I'll be quiet. I'll be quiet. I'll be quiet. Everything that we have in this gift to you. I wrote the song Keep Forget I wrote the song Keep Forgiveness in Your Life in 2011. And when I first performed it, my mother was like, you need to be moving, boy. <laughs> and so later on, I evolved years later to now to be able to be my most authentic self. And and to honor my father, too, his name is John Earl Nelson. He was born February the 28th, 1939, and he passed in January of 99. My mother was born January the 10th, 1942, and she died February the 16th, 2015.
And I'd like to thank you all for allowing me to be transparent. That's part of the project that I have. It's called Stingy to Generosity. And the stingy bitch in me would have been the person that would not have allowed myself to be transparent. And so now I'm on the other side as the generous person. And I say to my nephews and nieces, when they're communicating outside of texting, if you don't articulate, you better evacuate. And I'm giving them an opportunity to not use so many acronyms and state how they feel. In closing, you have a right to be angry, but not to be cruel. And it would have been cruel of me not to share my experience. One day I am going to transition this life. And I want to be remembered as this person. Happy, happy, happy dead. And no in between. If I disrespected intentionally anybody anywhere, I ask for forgiveness. I forgive myself because I use the I use the affirmation. I am gentle with myself and I'm gentle with others. So I'll have to look back and think about what I did and didn't say. Miles Monroe said, go to the grave empty. Any of you that's got a book or an idea or a project, go ahead and do it. Don't wait for anyone. However, when you put it out there, humans will rendezvous to help. Cynthia, Dr. Monroe, when I was in a meeting with you all, she came and made sure I had some water. That's thoughtfulness. Thoughtfulness goes a long way. All of us are going to acquire a lot of money and influence. It's how you use it. Are you using it to manifest or destroy? And sometimes that toggles between the two because we're in a state of duality. Thank you. And I will say one more thing. Do something new and get rid of something old and watch how your life gently unfolds. Thank you. Thanks, John. All right. I call we the adjourn. The motion's been on. We're just okay. Gonna, we're just going to vote now. Okay. Everybody who agree with the meeting being adjourned, say aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? We're adjourned. <laughs>